Ani Wache, hello everyone. This is going to be a quick presentation on the Height of Land Ecological Corridor Project. You might have seen that there are some events coming up that are related to this project or seen some social media posts about it. So this is just a quick video presentation to give you some more information on what's going on with this project. Starting with who is involved in this project. So my name is Alina McCullough, and I'm the Research and Conservation Coordinator with Wakotuin Development. Wakotuin, if you haven't heard of us before, we're a social enterprise owned by First Nations. We've been operating out of the Shaplo area, northeast of Lake Superior, for about the last eight years now. And we are pursuing the needs of our communities through renewing cultural practices, and upholding our community's rights in activities that are happening on the land. Our three owner nations are Shaplo Cree First Nation, Brunswick House First Nation, and Missinabe Cree First Nation. So Wakotuin takes our direction in terms of what projects we take on and the work that we do from those three owner communities. And back last winter, we had a series of engagement sessions with community members. We had one in each of those three owner First Nations to talk about conservation. We called them conservation days. Uh, and we talked to community members about how they feel conservation is happening on the landscape right now, how they would like to see conservation happen going forward. And these notes here are some of the takeaways that we got out of doing those sessions. So you can see there's things written on these sheets, like we are caretakers of the land for our future generations. And you can also see 30% by 2030 is written on one of the sheets. And that is a reference to an international target to protect 30% of land and water by 2030. And this is a target that Canada has committed to. So at Wakotuin, again, taking direction from our owner communities, we're looking to use that goal of 30% by 2030 to ensure that more of our community's traditional territories is protected from extraction and industry. And then that's done in a way that is led by our communities and aligns with our community's way of life and how we'd like to see the land be taken care of. So this particular project, the Ecological Corridor Project, actually comes from a Parks Canada program. And what an ecological corridor is, it's not exactly the same as a protected area. They're meant to connect protected areas and connect natural habitat that's important, but that's not protected right now, um, to create connectivity across the landscape. Uh, to, for instance, allow wildlife to be able to travel freely to different habitats that they need. So Parks Canada actually reached out to Shaplo Cree First Nation initially with interest in creating an ecological corridor in the area of their territory. And Shaplo Cree brought that opportunity to our two other owner First Nations and to Wakotuin so that we could work together on a joint project to establish an ecological corridor. And just a little bit more information on how parks defines an ecological corridor. It is a clearly defined geographical space where governance, management, and stewardship over the long term maintain or restore effective ecological connectivity while upholding indigenous stewardship values. So, where is this corridor going to be on the landscape? This corridor is going to exist on Treaty 9 territory northeast of Lake Superior in this general area. Uh, the green spots that you see on this map uh, are current existing protected areas. The purple area outlined here is specifically where Parks was interested in seeing a corridor be established by our nations. Because uh, again, the intent behind a corridor is that it connects current uh, protected areas and important habitats. And we've been working with the David Suzuki Foundation to get some of this work done. They were a part of those conservation day sessions that we had last winter, and they helped us in creating this map. Uh, so the fuzzy orange area that you see here on the map is the general area where we're looking at establishing the corridor. 
because it aligns with the area that parks wanted to see a corridor established in and because it overlaps with the traditional territory of all three of our owner First Nations. And it's also in the area of the Missinabe River watershed, which is something that specifically came out of those conservation days as an area that our communities wanted to see protected because the Missinabe River is a traditional canoe route for our communities. So as you can see, the exact location of the corridor is not set in stone whatsoever at this point. We're still very much at the stage where we're looking for input from community members and knowledge holders, land users and elders on where this corridor exactly should be, what the boundaries of it should be, and how we're gonna care for this land. And so that is the first step in this project that we're working on. So we wanna to go to as many community members as possible to discuss where exactly this corridor should be, what the boundaries should look like, uh, particular areas that you really wanna see protected and also the objectives for the corridor. So again, how do we wanna care for the land that is within the corridor that we're creating? Uh, and the step after that, once we have those boundaries, is to figure out what the current status is of that land in terms of who owns it. So how much of that land within the corridor that we want to establish is currently privately owned, how much of it is mining claims, figuring out those details so we can uh, start to understand how we would go about acquiring that land for conservation purposes. Once uh, we've done step two of this project, we're moving on to step three, which is establishing corridor governance. So in the long term, once this corridor is set up, who's going to be making decisions about it and how are those decisions going to be made? So that's another question that we would love to bring to the membership to get your input on um, how decisions about the corridor and the land are going to be made going forward in the long term. And then the final step that we hope to get done before the end of 2025, or at least start the process before the end of 2025, is actually acquiring the land. So as I said, we're going to be figuring out what the current land tenure is within the corridor. And then once we do that, figuring out who do we need to contact, what are the next steps we need to take to actually acquire that land um, so that it can be set aside for conservation and so it can be managed by our owner, First Nations. So again, we're looking to do a lot of community engagement and talk to a lot of people to make sure that this project unfolds in a good way, that we make decisions uh, that are based on what our community members want to see. So we're going to be traveling around quite a bit, hosting engagement sessions uh, on reserve, and then also in cities where we have a population of off-reserve members so that we can get everyone's input. And this is the current schedule that we have for these community engagement sessions. There are gonna be more locations and more dates to come. Um, so this is not everywhere we're gonna go. This is just the first initial round of places that we've been able to confirm. Uh, and we've been working with the Missanabe Cree hubs to get these sessions organized. But I want to make it very clear that Chapleau Cree and Brunswick House off-reserve members in these places are welcome and encouraged to come out. So we're working with the hubs to organize these, but membership from all of our owner communities are welcome to come out uh, and attend these sessions. If you live in Timmins or the Sewer Sudbury Thunder Bay or Toronto, these sessions are for you to come out so that you can share uh, your input and ask any questions that you have about this project. So just to run through this quickly, we will be in Timmins on November 18th. We will be in Sault Ste. Marie on November 25th, Sudbury on November 29th, Thunder Bay on December 7th, and in Mississauga for the Toronto and London hubs on January 11th. And we are gonna be providing a meal at each of these sessions, and we're gonna be offering door prizes as well. So we really hope to see you come out. Um, the details in terms of times and locations and how to register is all going to be on our Facebook page uh, and the Misnabi Cree hub pages uh, are going to be sharing that information as well. So lastly, if you have any more questions about any of that, you can send us an email at conservation at .com. If you have something you really want to share with us about this project, you can email us there if you'd like to set up maybe a one-on-one -on -one conversation 
about this project, you can send us an email there. Pretty much any thoughts or questions that you have, that's your contact. Um, we also have a Facebook page set up for this project. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna be sharing the event details and any updates so you can follow along there. And we're also gonna be posting updates to our Wakoto and Development Instagram account. So I hope that that uh, helped answer any questions you have about this project, give you a better idea of uh, what we're looking to do. And Chimi Gwech, thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope to see some of you in person this winter.